I thought that you had to be born that way. I thought that you were born psychic and you know you were just a little weird all your life, right? But it's not true because you can do it at any point. And now I teach this and I realize that we all have this. We all get the intuition. We all have this psychicness. We don't, we're not all using it. So how many of you already feel like you know when your loved ones are around you? You sense that they're there. Sometimes you actually feel them. Who actually feels them or, or sees them? Anybody actually see their relatives? That's kind of rare, right? Wow. Or perhaps you smell them. Anybody ever smell perfume or cigarette smoke when they come around? Yeah, so you're already doing it. And communicating with animals. Do you feel you, you understand your animals? You know what they're saying? Yeah. Or who gets a premonition about when the phone rings and you know exactly who it is? Yeah. How about dreams? Do any of you get premonitions in dreams? You see, this is all about connecting with the other side. We're already doing it. A lot of the time we go, oh, well, you know, I kind of thought that my, my friend was here in spirit, but then maybe I was just making that up. And, and then we kind of dismiss it and say, oh, well, that was just maybe coincidence. But it's not. We just often don't pay attention and we don't, you know, we don't, really enhance that part of our world. So we're going to do a lot more of that today. But we're all different. We work in different ways. Um, so I say I became a medium when I was 40. I had a bit of an experience. Uh, do you want to hear that story? Okay, so <laughs> I went to an event. I, I mean, I, I like spiritual things, but I wouldn't say I was like really into it or anything. And I was at an event with my mom and we came and there was a psychic there. And she was a medium. She was going around the room saying, oh, I have your uncle or I have your mom and she was I thought she was great right and I'm thinking oh pick me pick me right I'd lost somebody and I was really hoping to be in touch but she didn't so she was having a workshop that weekend so I said mom let's go to the workshop because if we go to the workshop we're going to get readings she's going to be there all weekend she's going to read us and so we signed up this workshop it's called how to become a medium didn't really think anything about that right so off we go we're going to get readings all weekend and we go to this workshop and she has us do a little exercise. A little group, maybe 20 people. And we're just kind of meditative. And we're to make up this story about somebody's spirit that belongs to somebody in the room. So you're supposed to bring a spirit on your right. And you're supposed to talk to them about what their life was like. If somebody belongs to somebody in the room. You're just making up a little story with your spirit friend, right? And then each person gets up in front of the group, right? So the first person gets up and they're like, okay, I can feel somebody here. It might be a man, it might be a woman, it might be initial A, or E, or B, or F. So the room's like, could be my auntie, could be my uncle, huh? I think, I'm totally intimidated, I'm thinking, she's feeling something, like there's something there, she's feeling something. I didn't get anything, I was just making mine up, right? So it's my turn to get up, and I said, oh, I, I did mine wrong, I, didn't, I, I, just, I just made mine up, I didn't really get anybody. And she said, well, okay, well, what did you get? And I said, well, mine's for this guy over here. And uh, it's his Grand Pierre Marseille. He's talking French, but I understand him somehow. And he's telling me, Elian Bebe, show me a photo of when he was a baby. And he had a scaffolding company. This is what he did for a living. This is how he, what he, how he lived, how he worked, how he passed away. And then his dad took the scaffolding company, and he was supposed to take it, but he became a pilot. And I started telling him different things, making things up, telling him my little story. And then I said, okay, so was any of that right? And the guy starts freaking out, and he goes, wow, that was his name, that's what he did. I, I was supposed to take my dad's scaffolding company, I'm a pilot, and he's totally freaking out. He's totally freaking out, I'm, I'm totally freaking out. Because <laughs> I have no idea how I've made this up, right? So I start doing this every, all weekend. And we're talking about medical intuitive, and, and I'm telling people what their ailments are and stuff, and I'm completely making it up, and it's all true. And I have no idea how I'm doing it. So I go home that night, and he said, oh, we got one. Okay, now you tell, you tell my daughter about this. She said, no, 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 you need, I need to talk to you. Hey, hey, we've got one over here. Okay, no, 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 you need to talk to me. And I'm like, whoa. So the next morning I come back and I go, okay, I got a message for you and I got a message for you and a message for you. And um, how do we turn this off? <laughs> and I had to go to her and, and she had to explain to me, you know, like an on-off switch and how, how to reel it. And I had to talk to my guides and say, okay, I, I mean, this is wonderful but we have to have an on-off time because I can't live like this. Once you have your foot on the other side, you don't want to be that much on the other side because 
then you are completely dead sick. And that's why half of these psychics are completely losing their mind, right? Because they probably don't have an off button. <laughs> so I couldn't really understand what happened to me because I just made it up and I thought, well, maybe it was just that I had a go. Like how many times do you really just have a go at doing it and just trust yourself? You don't, I mean, you don't try to guess somebody's relatives that are around them in spirit, right? So that was one thing, but the other thing I'd done was my auntie had come over recently from England and she's a Reiki master, which is weird as all heck to me because she was an insurance adjuster growing up, and, but somehow she fell into this Reiki and she became a Reiki master. And so she came over and she said, I'd like to do an attunement on you. How many of you had an attunement? Yeah, quite a few. Okay, so what happens is they open you up and the spirits put these sacred symbols inside you. So she does a bunch of tapping and putting these symbols in. And some people feel like sparks going off and fireworks and everything. And so she does this and I'm like, okay, I don't really feel anything to be honest. But okay, right? And I start practicing doing Reiki on people. And they're like, oh, wow, that was amazing. You know, I felt this around my knee and now my knee's working. This is fantastic. And I'm like, really? Because I'm not really feeling anything. And I'm giving it, but I'm not feeling anything. And, but people were telling me they were getting great results. And I just thought it was just, you know, um, psychosomatic because I was, you know, doing Reiki on them. But you know, I was getting great results. And it took me a long time to really believe. But I found out this. Some of us are very sensitive to energy. Some of us are very clairsentient, meaning we feel the energy. And some of us are not so sensitive to the energy. We have different gifts. So I'm more clairaudient. So mine comes in messages, not so much feeling. So I can really feel that energy so much. How many of you get ringing in your right ear? Yeah, you get it pretty strong, right? And this lady over here, you were like me. When I first heard this ringing in my right ear, I thought I was doing something wrong. I thought I was using my cell phone. <laughs> thought there was something medically wrong with me, right? You've been to the doctors, see what's wrong with your right ear? Yeah, okay. Well. This is actually spirit saying, hey, I'm trying to talk to you and you're not listening, right? So that's your clear audience. There are you poor souls in this audience that are clairsensitive, like this lady in the purple over here, this lady with the bright colors, the lady in the blue, this, this lady and this gentleman. Some of you, you know who you are, very clairsentient, this lady over here with the blonde hair and the glasses, right? You are the people that everybody gravitates towards and tells you their problems because you are so empathic. You take on everybody's feelings, you help them out, and then you feel like crap. You feel tired, you get strange ailments, you don't know what's wrong with you, right? I'm, I'm surprised you can even be here in this event because you're walking around going, wow, I feel this, oh, whoa, I don't like the feel of that, right? You go to the, a big event, you go to the mall, and it really bothers you because you get overwhelmed by the energy, right? I go to the mall, I'm going shopping, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> so those of you who are super sensitive to energy, you feel it, you feel people's feelings. And it's wonderful, but you need a lot more protection. And all you do is white light of protection around you. You can just say, um, God protect me, angels protect me, whatever you believe. And as soon as you do go like that, you will get protection. Because if not, when you help people and they come and they dump all your problems, you're actually kind of, they're like these vampire suckers and they're, they're taking your energy and they're leaving you their stuff. So they feel much better after they've talked to you. They get up, they feel great because they've just dumped it all on you. And you go home and a couple of days later you're like, why, why do I not feel very well today? Why do I feel tired? Or you've got all kinds of strange ailments. Okay, that's clairsentient. So, we're gonna, we're gonna use our feelings in the body, but we're gonna make sure we're protected. Because that's a great thing to do, but always do it with, uh, with love and light and protection. Um, then, let me see, there's clair clairvoyance. Clairvoyance is very rare. Those are the people that actually see things. Now, you guys tend to be more visual in life, more creative people, and you start to see colors, uh, now, this lady over here, you used to see a lot of things when you were younger. You kind of block it. Now you see little things, but you're a little nervous about it. Um, the lady on the end with the purple. This lady here, you're very clairvoyant. You actually see spirits, right? Yeah. Who actually sees either auras, colors? You see things out the corner of your eyes? Yeah. You guys are the more clairvoyant. So as we open up and open up your channels, you will see things more. 